greetings to you in the matchless name of Jesus. I'm so happy to be back with you again for yet another episode, episode number 31. And today we will deal with a brand new subject and we're so happy to deal with the subject of your purpose, your calling and your gifts. So what is the purpose of your existence? What is your calling and what are your gifts? It's important to understand because everything God created has a purpose. God created the birds to fly. God created the fish to swim. And God created the sun to shine. God created the water to flow. God created everything with a purpose. And why did God create you? That's the first question that we are going to understand in depth. What is the purpose of your existence? Why do you live this life? There was a purpose by which he created you. God created everything with a purpose. And God created you with a purpose. And it is so important that we understand why did God create me? Who are you and why are you living? In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 to 12, it's in Christ that we find out who we are. So the moment you enter into Jesus Christ and the moment you allow him to enter in you, that's when you find out who you really are. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designed us for his glorious living. You are designed for glory. You were designed by God before you were birthed in your mother's womb for glory, for glorious living, for abundant living, and you were designed for success. So this is what Ephesians 1, 11 to 12, the message version says, long before we first heard of Christ and got out our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designed us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose is working out in everything and in everyone. He's got a designed purpose for everything and for everyone, including you. You are designed for success. You are designed for glorious living. You are part of an overall plan of God and he's executing that plan. And he has his eye on you, the Bible says. His eyes are on you. So good. What a rich passage. And you want to find out who you are, you have to find out why he created you in Christ. In Christ. Why did he create you in Christ? What is the purpose of our living? So let me give you a few purposes. And this purpose is applicable to you. The number one purpose why God created you. The number one purpose. God created you to love you and to delight in you. God created you to love you and to delight in you. Now, I believe with all my heart, God created me to love me and to delight in me. In Revelation chapter 4, we have a fantastic verse. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things and they existed because you created what you pleased. God was happy to create you. Everything God created, he created and said, it's good. And I'm so happy. Psalm 149.4 says, for the Lord delights in his people. He delights in you. He delights in you. God delights in his people. When you have children and when you have grandchildren, 
you delight in your children you delight in your grandchildren the bible says for god so created each one of us to to love us and to delight in us to love us and to delight in us for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son the best he had he gave it because he loved the world every human being whether you are a hindu muslim whether you are whatever religious background whether you are rich or poor god loves you my brother he loves you and he created you to love you he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice he loves you now many people don't believe it and that's the problem it's that whether you receive this love Ephesians 1:4 the living translation says even before he made the world god loved us and chose us in christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes god loved us and because he wants us to be holy in a, in his sight he killed jesus jesus was sacrificed on the cross so that you will be considered holy i'll be considered holy Hosea 6:6 to 7 message version says i am after love that last not more religion i'm after love that last you know when he looked at jesus after the baptism under the leadership of john the baptist when jesus was baptized in matthew chapter 3 and when he got out of the baptism he had surrendered himself fully to the lord This is what the father said This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and that's my message for you God created you so that you are beloved to him and he wants to be pleased when you obey him is so delighted when you obey him out of love he is so happy is so happy when you walk in Christ god is so excited god created you to love you god created you to have intimacy with you this is what he says in john 17:3 and this is eternal life to know you the only true god to know means to have intimacy with you adam knew eve adam had intimacy with eve the bible says adam knew eve and eve gave birth to a child matthew 6 30 to 33 says and if god cares so wonderfully for wild flowers he loves the nature but that wild flower is there today and tomorrow it is thrown away why do you worry don't you think he loves you much more he cares for you much more and he will provide for you so seek ye first the kingdom of god above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need everything you need God created you to have intimacy with you to love you to have intimacy with you and to delight in you delight in you the more we are closer to him the more happy he is he longs for your intimacy the number two purpose why God created you He wants you to be part part of his big family. Ephesians 1:5. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. God is so happy to make you part of his family. That's why the greatest revelation 
that Jesus brought forth that the previous prophets could not emphasize on is the revelation that God is your father. God is not just God. God is your father. So there's a father-son relationship, a father-daughter relationship. And in the family of God, you have God the father. And the church is like a mom, mother, cares for you. And then you have brothers and sisters within the family. So God created me to be part of his church family. Where Jesus Christ himself is the eldest brother. So we have brothers and sisters. We have a beautiful father, God the father. So God created me. And God created you to be part of God's family. Everyone who's born of God is my brother, sister. Who, the person who's washed by the blood of Jesus, born of the spirit and the word of God, is a brand new creation, but he's my brother. I was born naturally. In 1955, and then after 37 years, I had an encounter with Jesus. I was born of his spirit and born of his word, born again. And I became part of God's beautiful family. God is inviting you to be part of his family. You know, he says, your sins can be washed away, your iniquities can be uh, taken away, and your transgressions can be forgiven. Whatever you have done in the past is nothing, because I sacrificed my son. I loved you. I sacrificed my son as punishment for you. And just by opening up your spirit and your heart and receiving Jesus as your Lord, he says, you're part of my family. Part of my family. If you had never felt that you're part of God's family, just lift your hand and say, Lord Jesus, I want to be part of your family. I want to be born of your spirit and born of your word. Cleanse me. Wash me with your blood. And I invite you into my heart. And I want to be part of you. And he says, welcome Anyone who's weary and tired, just come to me. Jesus will never refuse you. He created you to be part of his family. The third person, the third reason why God created you. He created you to be the best of you. Means he wants to transform your character to be in the image of the character of Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 29 says, For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So he wants to be, to be part of his family and he wants you to be like him. Romans 8, 29, I repeat again, the, mess, the New Living Translation, for God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. So he wants to, you to be transformed into the character and image of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the firstborn and you are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ and his family and he wants you and me, our character, to be changed into the character of Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 1 to 3 says, What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called children of God. That's who we are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us. Or take us seriously because it has no idea who he is and what he's up to. But friends, 
That's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's the only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we will see him. And in seeing him, become like him. And in seeing him, become like him. All of us were looking forward to his second coming with glistering purity of Jesus' life, we should purify ourselves. So God created you. The third purpose is to transform you into his glorious character. So why did God create you? We examined three purposes so far. Number one, God created you to love you and to delight in you. Number two, God created you to be part of his family and then love you as part of the family. And God created you for the third purpose so that you're not only born into his family, you're transformed into his image, the image of his son, Jesus Christ. So God created you to be transformed into the character of Jesus so that the best in you will come out. The number four reason why God created you and me. He created me and he created you to serve others. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are this workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. God created you so that you can do good to others. So that you can do good to others. So we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God wants to do so much good in this world through you. And through me. And he wants us to walk into that good works. Or what is known as serving others. You know, this is what the Bible says about Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 10, 28, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So God anointed Jesus Christ to serve others, to do good to others, to help those who were oppressed by the devil. God created you and me to deliver people out of wickedness, out of evil, to do good to them, to serve them. Matthew 20 verse 27 and 28. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your servant. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. So Jesus came down in this world to serve. The purpose why God created you is to serve. Every day, serve people, add value to people, do good to people. Every day, do that. That's why God created you. And unless you do that, you'll never find true satisfaction in your life. Because the purpose you were created were to serve others. And the number five reason why God created you, the purpose of your living. God created you with a mission. The mission will be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. In John 17, when you read the message, verse 18 and 19, is something that is so beautiful. You know, it says, Father, I am returning to you, is telling, Jesus is telling the Father, because I've finished the work for which you sent me. 
you sent me something i completed the work and i'm so happy about it but the godless world hated me because i didn't join the godless world so i raised up these disciples please take care of them protect them from the evil one make them holy consecrate them with the truth your word is the truth he says the same way that you sent me into this world with a mission i send them into the world with a mission so the message version says jesus was sent from heaven with a mission to die as a ransom for many so god has ordained you as sent you into this world with a mission and the mission will be revealed by the holy spirit beautiful i have a mission to complete i should know that i am sent into this world with a mission and i have a mission to complete i have a purpose and i have a purpose to complete everything created as a purpose and the purpose has to be completed and the mission will be revealed by the holy spirit when i was a young boy i wanted to be a film producer i liked movies so i used to watch a lot of movies and i said i want to create my own movie <laughs> so as if that to produce movie you need money so i came to dubai i said i'll come to dubai make some money uh, build a house settle down then have extra cash and produce a movie that was my uh i thought that was my mission but when i met the lord when i met jesus he changed my life i came to know i was destined for success i was destined to serve i didn't know beforehand nobody knew neither my father nor my, my mother that this calling upon my life I'm called to go to the nations to reach out to the nations with the love of God. So far we have reached out to 46 countries. So there's a mission in my heart that's given by God. He said go into all the world preach the gospel preach the good news he who hears and is baptized will be saved. he who doesn't hear will be condemned a mission in my heart a love for people to serve people serve people what's your mission what's your mission i love to build schools and give it away free if possible the sixth reason why you were created you were created to be a witness of jesus and reflect his life through your body through your mind through your soul through your spirit before jesus ascended into heaven he called his disciples they asked master are you going to restore the kingdom of to israel now is this the time he told them you don't know the time timing is my father's business what you'll get is the holy spirit and when the holy spirit comes upon you you will be my witnesses 
in Jerusalem and all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world, you will be my witnesses. So God created me to witness Jesus Christ. 2,000 years after he was crucified, he died on the cross, he rose again from the dead. He's alive forevermore and today he's alive through me. And he wants me to witness him. Yes, I've tasted and known that the Lord is good. Yes, I've had a God experience. Yes, I had a Jesus encounter. Yes, when I encountered him, he changed my life. Yes, he turned my, success, my failure into success. Yes, I was a sinner. But now, because of his blood, I'm a saint. Yes, I was dead. But now I'm alive forevermore in him. Yes, I was poor, but I'm so rich in him. He changed my life. He created me to be a witness. So with this, I would just want you to meditate on these six points today. We will continue this class with episode number 32. Is that okay? So I just want to pray for you, you know, the meditation of this really shook my life. Please meditate on this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who is watching this particular video, that this will transform your life. This will give clarity to the purpose why you are living here on earth. The blessing of the Lord be with you and the anointing be released to you in Jesus' name. Amen.